There's a supernatural peace that passes all understanding. It begins to flow no matter what situation, no matter what circumstances, no matter what the doctors are saying, no matter what your check account is, bank account is saying, no matter what's going on. There's like, you know everything's going to work out because you have this, you have a loving father that cares about you, and you're in this together. It's not just you by yourself, you're in it together. And I want to show you this scripture. It's found in the book of Philippians, one of my favorite scriptures when it talks about prayer. Real practical, and I love how the word is. It has to be because that's just how he is. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6, the Bible says this. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything. Somebody shout everything. In everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Now listen to this. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. God's peace literally sets up a guard, like a garrison around your heart. Especially with all the crazy stuff that's going on in the world right now. How many of you are grateful for his peace? Guarding your heart, protecting your heart. A few weeks ago, I was going to go see one of my friends in uh, Huntsville, Alabama. And so I was driving up to Huntsville. I left in the evening, and I was going to drive most of the night. And, and then when I got tired, you know, I'd pull over and then, you know, finish and get there sometime in the morning. So I'm on the way to Huntsville, Alabama, and so I'm going through Atlanta. And so I'm going through Atlanta, you know that feeling you get where you're just getting sleepy? And I've learned enough, when you're really getting sleepy, just pull off the road. Just go ahead and stop. So I saw a truck stop. I pulled off the road, and I was talking with Brenda. And Brenda was like, okay, just be sure to lock the car doors because you need to do that. You're, you're at a place you've never been before. Do, okay, I'll do that. So I pulled off into a truck stop. It's a Love's, I think, a gas station behind a big semi-truck. So I hit the door lock and thought I hit the door lock. Hit the door lock and uh, just kicked the seat back and prayed a little bit, said, Father, thanks for a good night. Refresh me. Thank you for this flowing to me. Just praying, just talking with him. Shut my eyes, and man, I hit hard coma for about two hours. You ever do that? I mean, where you just got drool coming out of your mouth, and you're, you're just passed out. I, I was in a deep two-hour sleep. So I'm in this two-hour sleep, and as I'm sitting there, all of a sudden, you know, I, I'm, I'm waking up. Two hours have gone by, and I'm waking up. I'm feeling refreshed. And you go, oh, man, that felt so good. And I look over to my right, And in my car, there's this big clump, a big pile of clothes, huge pile of clothes. And I'm looking at that wondering, where did that come from? And it's sort of smelly clothes, too. You know, it just smells. And I'm thinking, man, somebody put clothes in my car. And my eye, you know, you're just waking up and you're wiping the sleep out of your eyes. And what is that? And all of a sudden, in this pile of clothes in my front seat, I see a little hand come out of the clothes, scratch the head, and go back down. You ever had your heart just go, brrrr? I look at it, and it wasn't a big hand. It was a little hand, so I'm thinking, this is a lady or a kid or something, and they're in my car in a pile of clothes. How does this stuff happen? So I look, and I, I, I'm i there, and I'm just peaceful, wasn't freaking out, wasn't like, oh, I didn't just panic. I just, I, I just do this. I go, oh, good morning. <laughs> and all of a sudden, this little head comes popping through all the clothes, and it's a little little lady. I don't know how old she was. Brenda asked me how old she was. and I, She looked about 60, but, you know, transient. She could have been 40. I have no idea. Could have been 12. I have no idea. But she just, she looks and she's smiling real big with all four of her teeth and she looks at me. She goes, I was wondering if you were ever going to wake up. She goes, I tapped on the window, but you were out cold and your car was unlocked. So I just thought, it's freezing out here. I'll sleep in the car. I hope it's okay. And I just start laughing. I go, man, I've never woke up with a strange woman like this before. This is my first time (laughs) that's ever happened. And it's, we're both laughing about stuff. And, and she goes, well, that's funny you're not scared. I go, no, no, there's peace. I, I, I feel good. She goes, well, I feel really good about this car, too. I just, I could just feel so much peace when I was walking around. I go, really? So we're talking. Then we start talking about the Lord, move right from peace, talking to about the Lord. And she's like, yeah, I love, man, Jesus has changed my life. And she's going on about how Jesus has changed your life. And she was hilarious because she's talking about how Jesus has changed your life and how he's got her through some tough times. And she said, you know, my ex-husband, I, that little beep, 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 beep. <laughs> She was saying stuff I've never, it's been, I haven't heard stuff like that. And I just look at her and I just start laughing. It's just like, Jesus, blah, Jesus, blah. I'm, I'm laughing at her and I'm, I'm saying, you are funny. 
She goes, I know, I, I get a little carried away sometimes, but that you got to know my ex-husband. He just, and she was all wound up, and she goes, but man, the Lord helped me through all that stuff, and I made it through. And so we'd do fine. We'd talk about the Lord for a little bit, and then she'd move into something else. I go, hey, listen, have you eaten breakfast or anything? Have you, are you hungry at all? She goes, I'm starving. I go, well, come on, let's go eat. So we went into McDonald's. We grabbed a, she, she got a, a breakfast. I got a breakfast, and I drove her, probably drove her about two hours to where she was wanting to go to, and drove her. We just talked the whole way, prayed with her before she got out of the car. But I started thinking about that. What would have happened if I would have seen that little hand come up and start, in the name of Jesus, throw the door open, kick her out the door, get out of my car. You know, that probably wouldn't have been as effective as what had happened, you know. But you know what it is? It's really so many times things will happen to us, and we just allow uh, concern. We allow, concern isn't really the word I'm looking for, panic. Let me just say it like that. Panic to just overwhelm us in our faith realm. But the Bible says that if we'll do this, if we'll be anxious for nothing, but in everything with prayer, supplication, with thanksgiving. Somebody shout thanksgiving. When you do it with thanksgiving, you let your request be made known to God, and then the peace of God that passes all understanding will guard your heart and mind. 